Perfect. Okay. Well, Carly, thank you so much for coming on and being willing to do your testimony. I'm so excited to have you. And I know we, we met in person actually pretty recently at the Deliverance Center. Yes. And your testimony, at least the piece that I know of, um, about your, your healing and your deliverance really struck me and just has been so powerful and instrumental for me telling a lot of other people about you and just giving kind of inspiration to people who are going through different things. Um, so I invited you on here to share some of your testimony with us. And um, I think we're going to do the long version. So if you will share with us maybe how you got, how you came to the Lord, what was your life like before? And, um, you know, we're, we'll go all the way up until the incident, we'll call it. Yes. The yeah. health incident. And then we'll move through that. But go ahead and share with us how you came to Christ and what your life was like. Well, first, let me just say I'm so honored to be here. And it really is um, my joy to be able to glorify the Lord. And I wouldn't be here without the Lord. As a matter of fact, I was heading down the path of death, not just metaphorically, but literally physically. Yeah. And he plucked me out of that. And so I'm just here. I'm just so glad to be able to share that with those and maybe touch the hearts of some people, like you're saying, that are going through some struggles and really need to be encouraged to know that if he did it for me, he's no respecter of persons and he'll do it for each and every one that is willing to come to him so Amen. so true um yeah truly truly and uh do you mind if we pray before yeah we get let's started? do it okay Go for it okay oh heavenly father we come before you in the mighty name of jesus christ of, of nazareth our lord and our savior our most high god and Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, sacred space that has your presence in it, Lord. We just thank you because your word says that where two or more are gathered, there you are in the midst. And so we invite you in, Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory and we thank you, Lord, that whatever it is that you want shared here today, that it would go out and be a blessing to all those that would watch this and listen to this and know that each and every one of you out there, he loves you with an unfailing love, a never-ending love, and he's wanting to touch your heart. So I pray that this blesses you, and thank you, Miss, Miss Erica, for having us here. And we just pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Cool. Great. So I came to the Lord... Um, almost four years ago now, uh, in a couple of weeks, it's going to be four years that I came to the Lord. And when I first came to him, it, he plucked me out of so many different spiritual traditions uh, that it was ridiculous. And originally I was looking for healing since I was a teenager. I just felt like there was something really, really wrong as, as a kid. There was something just not right. And I literally felt like I was screaming on top of a mountain, help me, help me, help me. And none of the adults can hear me. And so I went through life looking for healing because I had some, you know, physical things going on in my structure and my body, my spine. And I found, I found coping mechanisms to just kind of live life and go through life. And I then didn't know that there was healing in Christ. I had no idea that there was healing in Christ. And so I was looking at different healing modalities for years. Um, medical doctors couldn't help me. Physical therapists couldn't help me. I, I went to chiropractors. I went to um, new age uh, healers. Um, I, I went through the gamut and I, I went to rolfers. I had things like structural limitations in my spine and that was causing my breathing to be off and, and a whole host of a cascade of events physiologically that, you know, was slowly making my health decline. But I found coping mechanisms. But the more I found coping mechanisms, the deeper I got pulled into the new age. 
And so I was into things like um, uh, yoga and um, crystals and um, essential oils. And, and later, as I'm sharing, I'll get into, there's an aspect of, of like we can use essential oils to wear them as perfume and it smells good. But the aspect that I was involved with had a lot of witchcraft in it. So I was getting pulled deeper and deeper into the new age. And I was working with those that knew how to do Egyptian alchemical magic. Um, I was getting pulled into uh, yoga and Hindu communities um, I was into angels in the new age. There's, it's like a smorgasbord and you pick what you want. And it's like everything, many spiritual traditions get dumped into that new age category. And so I, I was looking at Buddhism and Hinduism and, and then looking at Zen Buddhism, I was getting into deep into meditations and those things were only bringing temporary relief, but little did I know what was happening on the back end of things that I was literally getting chuck full of demons yep. uh, through all of those things. And so it's interesting that they, there's a problem that is given to you and then a false solution that seems like it's working. And that's what it, that's what my life looked like. And in the meantime, I'm doing high power jobs. I was a managing director of a music organization and, you know, working 60, 70 hours a week. Nobody knew that I was into these things. And it, there came a point in time where it just started crashing. Mm -hmm. And the more I was getting these healings and, you know, body work and all kinds of things, um, all kinds of, you know, frequency gadgets and things that will elevate your frequency and that, that sort of stuff. Little did I know that it looked like I was getting healed, but it was literally draining my life force. It was literally draining the soul out of me. And over time, I, I started tumbling into the abyss and I started crashing and I was being loaded up with fatigue. And so I started really struggling in life. Um, and that's the, a, a basic gist of where I came from. I started struggling in life. I had, you know, failed relationships one after another, which was heartbreaking. It was just heartbreaking. Um, I was delving into, okay, like what was going on in my family line and maybe something genetic is happening or you know, looking at things spiritually. And I share that looking at things spiritually because back then I had spiritual eyes, but I didn't have spiritual eyes in Christ. Right. And there is a huge difference. When, when we think what we have spiritual eyes, because there's many that are born that have an understanding that there's something going on in the spirit realm that life is just not, it's just not this physical realm where we see the, you know, touch and taste and feel that there's something spiritually going on. But later, after coming to Christ, I started to find out that, oh, I had spiritual eyes that then was used in a way to circumvent Jesus and keep him out of the picture. Right. That's what and I yes. found was that, you know, people have spiritual giftings that are given by God, but the devil will take those and use them if you're not under the right authority. Yes, that's right. And this reminds me of the scripture in John 10. Whenever I read that scripture in John 10, Jesus says he's the door to the sheepfold. Yes. And he comes through the porter. He comes through the gate. And he knows his sheep and his you know, sheep know his voice. But the one who jumps over the sheepfold, over the gate, is like a thief, a, a, a robber, right? right? And so whenever I read that scripture, it's like, oh, spiritually speaking, that's like any one of us, just like I did, jump over the gate into the spirit realm without his permission. 
and receiving giftings that I should never have had because it was not through Christ. Right. So I, I was involved in all that and my life started tumbling way into the abyss, as I mentioned earlier. And about four years ago, I just was going down some rabbit holes, looking to see what was happening globally. Something was way off. And I started to open my eyes even more, but the Lord was actually calling me. He was drawing me, calling me to show me. He was having me look down these different rabbit holes, but I wasn't in Christ just yet, but that was definitely him drawing me. Um, and he had been drawing me for decades. He was drawing me. And every time I heard the gospel, I'm like, no, 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 I, that, no, that can't possibly be true. I, I'm all that spiritually. And I know, no, mm -mm, the, why do, why do you, thing, mm -mm. why do you think it was such an aversion for you? I mean, I had the same thing going, a lot of your story kind of mirrors what happened to me, but what was the aversion? Do you think looking back now that you had? Towards the, the aversion gospel. that I had um, brings me right back to 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. The God of this age, meaning Satan, the God of this age has blinded the minds, but in the Greek it's the word noema, which means thoughts, has blinded the thoughts of the unbelieving. Yep. And so I kept being blinded because I had spiritual eyes. I saw things in the spirit realm. I sensed things spiritually. I sensed things emotionally. I knew what other people were, were feeling and what they were thinking. And, and I was like, but I didn't know that Satan literally was blinding me from seeing the truth. He kept pumping me with this idea that I'm spiritually all awake. And so what do I need the gospel for? That's got to be a false, that's got to be false. Those Christians don't know what they're talking about. That's got to be false because in the new age, you're taught that you're all that and it's all self-love and we love each other and everything is based on love. So because I thought I wanted to love everybody, that was my heart. I wanted to love everybody. I wanted to show love and compassion to others, but it didn't have Christ in it. So that was false love. You know, the devil's, really, the devil's really sneaky. He can pump people full of a love feeling and make them think that they're loving, but there's no God of the Bible in it. Right. And so I had my eyes blinded and it was such an aversion to me. The word sin was such an aversion to me. I hated that word. I hated the word sin. Yep. It's like, oh, please, no, uh, uh, no, we're loving and we're loving people and, you know, we're having compassion on people. So that word sin, oh, and what's so amazing now is that I weep at reading the word of God and I'm on my knees frequently in repentance when the Lord brings things to mind for me to repent. Yeah. And so it's such a 180 turn. And so I'm going along, I'm plugging along in this, in this life and I'm going down these rabbit holes and what I'm finding literally disgusts me about all the global issues that are going on and everybody, you know, we know what's going on now, all the, just all the stuff that's going on out there. Um, and I started to see that the evil, which I knew that there was terrible things happening in the world before coming into Christ, but Jesus like ripped the scales off my eyes and then showed me that that evil per is perpetuating and it's getting worse. And I literally, my stomach was turning, seeing all these different things. And I suddenly had a wake up call four years ago uh, and this was happening in a span of weeks that, that I was being shown this. And I literally, the next day after like 
three or four weeks of going through all of this material. Cause remember we were in the lockdown back then. So, yeah. you know, I was using my time to kind of look to see what's really going on here. And what I saw literally disgust me with the child trafficking and, 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 and the drug cartels and just so much stuff that I suddenly had a wake up of, oh my gosh, I think Satan is a real dude. I think he's a real person. Oh my gosh. Because in the new age, you're blinded to that. Oh yeah. No, you have to integrate your darkness. And, you know, the more you integrate your darkness, the more, and you transmute your emotions and you transmute your spiritual records and all that stuff. There was no such thing as Satan being a real person. And I had this recognition of, oh my gosh, I think he's real. And then I walked around that afternoon, just kind of mulling that over. And that evening I'm like, oh, Satan is real. Oh my gosh. That means the Bible is real. The God of the Bible, like what? That night, Erica, I lay down on my bed. It was 8.30 at night. And I literally saw one demonic face after another coming at me, screaming at me. Wow. Screaming at me. The next one screaming at me. And when I say see, it was like, I don't really see visions. I see like, I could sometimes see an outline of a figure or something or a wispy thing. But I saw, I only saw like the faces, like the outline of faces, but I saw that they were screaming at me, screaming at me. And I tried every trick in the book that I learned from the new age to get rid of these things. And nothing was working. Nothing was working I was breathing I was meditating I was thinking on beautiful things I was you know oh the light the light none of these none of these things worked and then after one hour I just threw my arms up when I was laying flat on the bed I just threw my arms up and I screamed out the name of Jesus and literally those things disappeared wow they completely <laughs> disappeared and peace filled the room. And I was like, what? And I sat up in the bed. And this is how blinded I was. It still took me another two weeks to accept Jesus. I was so blinded that I sat up in the bed and I, I just yelled out, Jesus. Okay, what is going on here? Because these demons are not subject to the name of Isis or, or Krishna or or Yogananda, or, or Buddha, or, you know, any of these folks, they're not subject to their, their names, because I've been introduced to a lot of those um, gods, right? I was introduced to a lot of that stuff in the New Age. There, no, obviously, you have authority over the spirit realm. And then I stood up from my bed, Erica, and I literally said, I literally did this to the, to the air. I'm speaking to the atmosphere, and I'm going, that's it. I am tired of every spiritual <laughs> tradition. I am tired of going to retreats. I am tired of reading books. I am tired of doing these rituals. I am tired of it. I'm done. Amen. And I said... <laughs> And I literally said, Jesus, if you are truly the son of God, I want you to tell me. I want you to tell me. I don't want to read it in no book. I don't want to hear it from nobody's mouth. I want you to tell me if yeah. you really are the son of God. In the evenings, when I still have the dog, he's since we put him down. But in the area that I live, there's no street lights. So I would walk the dog in the evening when it, when it was dusk and we're on a hill. And so I come up over the plateau and, and, you know, where we're living on the same street and at the end of that street and there's all trees around and there's hills around, there's no street lights. At the end of that street is a very tall telephone pole with a transformer on it. And at dusk I'd be walking and we get up to the, over the plateau and I'd look and I'd see Jesus hanging there. 
And like I said, I don't see full blown visions. I saw like, you know, the, the light and the transformer and it looked like kind of like a person hanging there. So it wasn't like a full blown vision because I don't I don't see those. But I was like, oh, my gosh. But I got the impression of Jesus hanging there. And that happened every night for two weeks wow. until it finally cracked through that blindedness. And I get home one evening after two weeks and I put the dog in the house and I go in my bedroom and I literally start crying and bawling my eyes out. Jesus, I think you're trying to tell me that you really are the son of God, that you really are the God of the Bible. And uh, in that moment, I saw another outline, wispy kind of, of a vision of, of the, the transfiguration. And so I knew about the transfiguration, even though I had never really read the New Testament. <laughs> right. I knew about the transfiguration and I literally like, like got the impression of him dazzling white. But what I sensed in my spirit was his power. Because you got to remember in the new age, there's all of these false Jesuses running around. There's yeah. all these new age Jesuses running around that say all these blasphemous things. Like he, 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 like he was married to Mary Magdalene right. and, and they were doing Egyptian alchemical magic together. And that he was trained in the temple of Osiris and she was trained in the temple of Isis and all of this stuff. So it had, he had to break through all of those false ideas about him. But I literally sensed in my spirit, his power as the almighty God. And the next thing I know, I, I fell on my knees and I did a face plant on the floor and I am bawling like a baby. And that's when I gave him my life and amen, amen to that. That's beautiful. It was truly the most amazing moment of my life. And then I, I professed, I confessed him as Lord. And then I lay on the bed and literally felt him putting the Holy Spirit in me. And uh -huh. Erica, when the Holy Spirit came in and came all the way into my belly, I literally cried out, God, wow. like, a, like a child who met her father for the first time and felt satiated and not feeling lost any longer so the all those cries as a little kid got met in that moment got it met. sounds like <laughs> that met exactly in that moment wow and then later on a little did i know in you know in reading is it i think it's in romans where paul was saying where we get the spirit of adoption where we where we cry out abba father yeah and that's what i'm like i'm like that's what happened to me that's what yeah <laughs> Yeah. That is so amazing. Wow. So, so that's my salvation. That's how I got, that's how I got saved. And then he, you know, like a week or two later, I literally felt the Holy Spirit saying to me, you need to start reading the word now. Now that you have me, you need to read the word and you, you can't read it from your flesh. You need to, you, you need to read it and let me tell you what it means. Right. So, yeah. So what happened with like, friends, family, everybody who knew you along this way, because probably like similar to me, I definitely had some repercussions, right? As I went through that process. So what did you find? Yeah. So interestingly enough, before my salvation, the Lord, I, I know it was the Lord. He started moving people out of my life. I started, there was a season like two years before the salvation that I just shared two years before he was moving people. I was starting to lose friends left and right. And I'm like, what's going on here? And I was thinking, Oh, you know, Oh, maybe the universe is like doing this. I'm like, now I think it's just, I think I look back and I, I look at that person that I was and I'm like, I don't even recognize that person and the languaging that I used to use. But um, then when I came to the Lord, I started losing. More friends. Oh yeah. I started losing more friends. I, I lost, I think I lost every single friend of mine. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple of people in my life that are from back then. Um, but I lost, I lost everything. And I didn't, I didn't have work at the time. 
So I'm like, oh my gosh, what's going on with my income? I just, I, I lost all my friends. <laughs> I lost all my friends. Oh my goodness. You know, what is happening here? And I started losing other things in my life. You know, mm -hmm. my, my possessions were going and the things that I owned, um, you know, when I came to the Lord, like almost like five weeks later, um, I literally felt the Holy Spirit in my spirit, man, I was waking up. It was first thing in the morning and I literally felt the Holy Spirit moving me. I get out of the bed and I knew what he wanted me to do. I came downstairs and I threw out five boxes, big boxes of books, yeah. five of them, huge with tons of all, all kinds of spiritual books and self-help books and all kinds of things threw them, threw them in the trash. Now, yeah. Technically, you know, according to the book of Acts, where, you know, what they did in Ephesus, where they brought the books and they burned them in a bonfire. But I was like, Lord, I, I live in a high fire danger area. There's there's <laughs> no way I can start a bonfire here. I no, this this area had a fire going through here 20 years ago just by an ember. Wow. And, and I'm like, Lord, I'm just going to have to throw them in the trash and I will tr trust you to dispose of them the way you need to. Right. But yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So then what about your family members? Like, were people like, who are you? Like, this is a totally different, you know, what were they saying when they were seeing these changes happening? Yeah. Yeah. Because they, they, they can't ditch you as easily as your friends could, you know, they're right. kind of tied in. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. So my family was like, okay, what are you doing? <laughs> what what are you what are you doing and and I I just kept saying you know Jesus is Lord Jesus is Jesus is the God of the Bible Jesus is the God of the New Testament he's also the God of the Old Testament who do we that's who was talking through the whole Old Testament yeah was was the Lord Jesus Christ and um and it took them a while, but then guess what? A year later, my sister came to the Lord. My sister, a year later, wow. she's like, I'm I'm having a I'm having a revelation. And then my mother also came to the Lord. And so wow. you know, they they are they're in the Lord now. And it's really it's really interesting because of my you know, my upbringing and my background. So that is amazing. So, yeah. so tell yeah. us, tell us a little bit about, you know, what happened. Cause I'm not sure the timeline, right. From you finding out you were sick and then till now, can you share with us mm -hmm. what happened with that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So in 2021, so my salvation was in 2020. And then in 2021, I started coming up with these really bizarre symptoms um, in my nervous system. I literally felt like my nervous system was being jackhammered. Like literally somebody was in there doing this. And, um, and I'm sharing that because it ties into the diagnosis that finally came through. So in 2021, I went through a battery of tests. And no doctor can find anything. You know, they checked my nervous system. They checked my muscular system. They checked my cardiovascular system. They checked my endocrine system. Um, you know, they did all kinds of blood work. They couldn't find anything wrong. And I felt like it was demonic. And so I went through a few sessions of deliverance. And because the deliverance minister didn't really teach me about repentance and forgiveness and mind renewal I actually got backlash and got worse than mm. getting better initially I felt like I was better for for a few days maybe a couple of weeks but then I started getting backlash and I just felt like there's something demonic going on here um I'm I'm literally like literally I'm feeling like my nervous system's doing this the first three weeks I was flat on my back and couldn't get out of bed. Wow. Cause I was literally feeling like my nervous system doing this and buzzing and the exhaustion, like the fatigue of like running a motor. Right. 
and then you run out of gas. That's what that's what I felt like. I literally had to crawl to the bathroom. And um, but over a period of 10 months, that's those symptoms started disappearing. I just kept praying and praying. Um, and I didn't really know that much about deliverance, but I just kept praying like, Lord, I need your help kind of prayers. Right. And then, um, in 2022, um, I was starting to get, you know, I was starting, I was better somewhat, but I was still dealing with fatigue and something was not right, but I was still able to go through my day. Um, and then one morning in, in July of 2022, I woke up and I had literally had stabbing pain in my gallbladder, like somebody taking a sword right there where the gallbladder is and slicing me here and then taking the sword and ripping me open mm. and then up through here, through the chest, into the shoulder and up my ear. And I'm like, I literally it, to breathe it was it was so difficult cuz every breath I took I literally felt like I was being stabbed and I thought this is classic gallbladder pain I'm having a gallbladder attack and so I had some people pray for me and it was still there a couple of days later and I'm like I can't I can't handle this cuz I can't even hardly breathe and I and I was hardly eating anything cuz every time I ate the pain got worse so I went to the emergency room and on the way to the emergency room, I'm praying and asking, Lord, okay, if you want them to take out my gallbladder, please make that abundantly clear. And I'm not a type of person that would like, I, I don't like doing medicine. And right. Surgery, if we can avoid that, it, right? let's not. Let's, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's not, right? That's me too. Yeah. hundred percent. But you know what was interesting, Erica, because I had my rebellious ways and I was into the new age and, oh, you know, we can heal anything. I was saying to the Lord, I, you know, that's not my choice, but if you want them to take it out, I will submit to you. Amen. If that's your will, I will submit and I will do it because that's what you're telling me to do. And I know that you have the long range plan for me and your my best interests in your heart, Lord. But if you don't want them to take out my gallbladder, please make that abundantly clear. Well, I spent the day in the emergency room. They couldn't find anything. They did all kinds of scans and scoping and ultrasounds and CT. And they said, no, there's nothing wrong with your gallbladder. There's no stones in there. There's no sludge. Well, that's another story. Um, but I came home and... Um, I did a natural cleanse. I talked to a sister in Christ who's actually a nurse. And she's like, girl, that's the gallbladder. That's, I had the same kind of attack. So I did the, the gallbladder cleanse and I passed all of these stones. And I thought, and the re, here's, here's the reason why I'm bringing this up. I thought, okay, wow, I'm fine. I'm good. The pain went away. I passed all these gallstones. You know, everything's good. I, I passed a bunch of sludge, even though they said I didn't have any sludge either. And I thought, oh, good. I'm clear. I'm fine. No pain. Right. But what I didn't realize was, is that the demons were going to find another way because I didn't do any repentance then right. with the gallstone. So they found another outlet because they told me that I was completely, I had a clean bill of health. So I, I did all this and I was fine. The pain goes away. But five months later, the demons found another way to attack me. And that was in December of 2022. And so, you know, less than 15 months ago. I woke up one morning in December and I'm feeling around my abdomen. I'm just kind of, you know, with my fingers, I'm touching and I'm like, what is that? And there was a lump in there that was really hard. And I'm going like, what is this like food that's stuck somehow? Like what in the world? I've never felt anything like this. So I kept my eye on it a couple of days and I woke up a couple of days later. And not only did I feel this massive lump, but my belly was so distended. I literally looked like I was more than nine months pregnant. Oh My, my goodness. belly was filled with fluid. And I'm like, I'm going back to the emergency room. 
Like what in the world? Meantime, I had already contacted Hardcore Christianity. I contacted them in October, I think it was October, or November. Um, so just like five, six weeks prior to me feeling this lump in my abdomen, I contacted them. I had read, you know, Mike's website. I had, I was looking at the self-deliverance instructions and I'm like, well, this is kind of similar to what the Lord was showing me to do. So I was doing that and I emailed him and I said, I'm, I'm doing your self-deliverance and he, and he sent me the miracle list. So that was November of 2022. And, um, so I'm looking at this list and I'm going, okay. And I get started on it. Well, in December of 2022, I feel this lump. And then a couple of days later, my abdomen was distended and I'm, my roommate is taking me to the emergency room. Thank goodness. I threw my travel Bible in my bag. So I spent the day in the emergency room and they, and they scanned me and they said, yep, there, there's some sort of mass there and we're going to have to admit you and we need to run a battery of tests. So I'm like, okay. And Part of the time in the emergency room, I was waiting on the gurney for like hours to get the scan back. And, to, you know, so I'm waiting before they admit me. And I had been eating less and less calories over a period of two months. And I'm starting to lose a bunch of weight because every time I eat, like I take a few bites and then I can't eat anymore. So that's part of the symptomatology. And so I'm you know, losing this weight and I'm not eating enough and I'm in the emergency room and I'm waiting on this gurney and Erica, I have never felt such hunger in my entire life. Like the pangs of hunger, literally like everything was starting to go black. I had a lump in my throat because of the hunger it was insane my at my my intestines were starting to lock down because of the hunger because they wow. said you can't eat anything today you can't drink anything today because if we have to take you into emergency surgery you can't have anything so here's another day of not eating and i'm literally like and i feel like i'm gonna black out laying on this gurney and then all of a sudden i thought of jesus in the wilderness 40, 40 days, days. yeah 40 nights without food and without water and I literally could see the scripture on the page in my Bible because I've read it so many times. And I'm like, and something, the Holy Spirit welled up in me and the Holy Spirit welled up and his power. And I literally said, Satan, get thee behind me for you know not the things of men. You know, not the things of God, but only the things of men. And man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And I'm literally saying this in my mind with that level of passion. And Erica, it broke. The darkness lifted. The lump in my throat disappeared. The cramping down on my intestines stopped. And the hunger disappeared. Wow. The word of God. Praise God. <laughs> that is amazing. Praise the living God. <laughs> he is it, so cool. I had no hunger and I was able to go through the day until they finally admitted me uh, in the early evening. And I, they gave me a battery of tests. I spent 10 days in the hospital because it was over Christmas and the pathology labs were on limited hours. They come back and they tell me, you have stage four reproductive cancer and I'm like what what how did I go from nothing in July to stage four in only five months and that's why I told you the story about the gallstones because even though I did the gallstone flush and I got the gallstones out and the pain went away which is important that's important because I was able to breathe then and I was able to start eating then that's important, but it didn't get rid of the demons. Nope. And that doesn't get rid of demons. 
and that doesn't cause people to go down in repentance. So when they discharged me, I got home and my belly was still like way out to here. They were trying to give me stuff in the hospital to excrete that fluid. Didn't excrete the fluid. Um, I came home and I was on my knees in repentance. But the minister that Mike from Hardcore Christianity gave me, which is Stephanie, um, she called me and we were doing deliverance calls from my hospital bed. <laughs> that sounds like Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And and I was in one of the one of the best hospitals in the world, you know, in the country, if not in the world. You know, it's part of the UC system. Surgeons come from around the world flying to come to UCSD to do surgeries there. And I tell you this because it's a teaching hospital also. And there were nurses and doctors and doctors and nurses in and out of my room all day long. But you know what the Holy Spirit did? The moment the deliverance call started with Stephanie over the phone, boom, nobody came in my room. And I had like four deliverance calls in from my hospital bed. And I said, I don't care. I'm screaming my head off. I am coughing my, my brains out. I am coughing these demons out. I don't care what I have to do. Because I called her and I said, hey, I'm in trouble. I'm in the hospital. And she's like, we're doing calls from, your, I don't care. You're in your bed. And I'm like, okay, I'm going for it. Yeah. Life or death. Let's do it. Life or death. And so then they discharged me. And um, during the month of January of 2023, so just less, you know, just a little bit more than a year ago, I really started in with these deliverances and I was doing the the, the miracle list and we were getting out bitterness and self-pity and self-hatred and rejection and fear and i was repenting i was on my knees daily crying my eyes out and sure enough before i started any treatment with the doctors i started excreting that fluid in the month of january and my belly went down to the right size even though the lump was still there but the fluid was leaving my belly. And I called the oncology team and I said, hey, I just excreted all this fluid. My belly is back down. And they're like, there was silence on the phone. And she, <laughs> Not possible. <laughs> Not possible. That's what she said. Uh, we don't have any medical explanation for that. And I'm like, that's right. Because I didn't say this, but I was thinking this, my God is my healer and my doctor. That's the reason why I excluded that fluid. That's right. That's right. And so I prayed about it, Erica, because I was of a I was of a person, and see this this goes back to arrogance and judgment. I said for years I would never do chemo. I would never. I was just. I would never do chemo. I'm, I'm not doing. Chemo. I, I, I don't care. I'm not doing chemo. And I said that for years because I was always encountering people that had cancer and, you know, and I would see them and they were taking chemo and I'd be like, I'm not, I'm not doing chemo. But just much like the gallstone issue, I said to the Lord, Lord, you know, I, if it were me, I would say no, but I, I am your servant. And if you want me to do this, then please make it clear and I will take the chemo, even though I don't really want to. But if you say, then I will do it. And if you don't want me to do it, please make that clear. And I prayed and I prayed, I prayed up until the, even the, the first treatment. And I kept getting peace and I kept getting, yes, it's, it's going to be okay. There's a reason why I want you to take this. First, I want you to be on your knees and I want you to repent for the way you have always viewed Western medicine. You, you need to repent for that. And yes, I don't agree with everything that they do. But you need to repent. And Erica, what I found was is that I found tons of the Lord's people within the medical system. I kept running into Christians left and right over my year journey in the medical system. And so here's what I did. 
I, they told me and the consult that it was going to be, we're going to give you three chemo. We're going to shrink everything. The tumor that was in my abdomen was the size of my fist. That's huge. That's huge. In, in terms of two, they usually measure tumors the size of like centimeters. Right. This, they, were, they measured mine in inches. That's huge. The size of my fist. So they said, we're going to shrink everything because there were other smaller little tumors. And it was stage four. The, the lymph nodes in my chest were already uh, enlarging. So they said, we're going to give you three chemo and that's going to shrink everything. And then we'll give you a surgery and we'll take out what's remaining of this big thing and anything else that we, we see in there. And, and then we'll give you three more chemo. Well, I was on the fast track with the ministry team from Hardcore and the fast track was, I was on Sister Julie's Zoom every Monday. I was on Brother Rick's Zoom every Wednesday. I was on a live call with Stephanie every week. I was on Mike's live stream every Friday, right? And I was on the fast track. And in between all that, I was doing the miracle list. Well, the Lord is the great physician. And I went through that three chemo and that thing disappeared that thing this thing the size of my fist that's I, nuts. I was like when they sent me for the scan after only three chemo that thing was gone and i started telling people i started telling people the miracle that god gave me every person that i encountered um at, at, at the cancer clinic every person that every, every patient I started praying for the patients. I'm like, if the Lord could do it for me, he will do it for you. Every medical person that I told that that disappeared, they said, that's that's a miracle from on high because that uh, thing, that size is not, we, we don't have medical records that show only three chemo take down something that size. And Erica, this thing was in my abdomen. It was not in the intestines. It was sitting on top of the intestines, like riding on the intestines. But there was a small piece of it pushing into the colon wall, a small little like stalk, I would call it, I guess, pushing into the colon wall. And the oncologist said to me, you know, when I open you up, this is before any treatment started. When I open you up, because this little thing is pushing into the colon, I may have to cut out a piece of your colon and give you a colostomy bag. And I'm like, Lord. Not only did this thing disappear, the stalk disappeared. They did not have to take out a piece of my colon. Amen. And this is this is from the Holy Ghost moving the Lord Jesus with deliverance and getting out all the root of bitterness and self-pity. And but you want to hear something interesting? I thought I had forgiven those people decades ago. And I even said to the Lord in prayer, Lord, but I, I forgave these people decades ago. And you know what I heard back? Woman, you're not even close to forgiving them. Wow. Yeah. Do you recognize it now, looking back, what he was talking about? Yes, absolutely. When I went through all of that repentance and all of that forgiveness, especially doing step number one on the miracle list, praying that Matthew 544 over each name, I suddenly, like one person in my life, I had to repeat that verse like 60 times, six zero. And like after the 10th time, okay, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you. And the Lord's watching me, you know, like rolling my eyes. And I'm like, um, yeah, okay, I repent for rolling my eyes, <laughs> but I'm not feeling everything. And the Holy Spirit said to me, you keep going. You cannot afford not to. Your back is up against the wall now. You cannot afford. Keep going. Just say it. And I'm like, okay. And I kept going and I got to like the 50th time. And I, and I, that, that hard shell in me started to crack and break through. And by the 60th time of repeating that verse over this one particular person in my life, I was sobbing my eyes out. And that's when all the bitterness started to really go and all of the self pity 
and the hatred and the self-hatred. And then during the deliverance calls, these demons just started flying out of me, flying out of me. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> that is amazing. It yeah. truly, it truly is. It's a miracle work of, of God. And I remember when I received the miracle list from Brother Mike, that was in November. So that was just before the diagnosis. That was like maybe five, six weeks before the diagnosis. It says in the email, he said to me, don't let the demons tell you that this is going to be long and arduous. And I'm reading this list when I get this email and I'm like, I can't do this. This is too long and arduous. So I wrote him back and he's like, don't let them tell you. <laughs> don't let them tell you. And the Holy Spirit really started working through me, convicting me. And now, Erica, now I tell people, don't wait to do this until you have a life-threatening diagnosis. Don't wait until your back is up against the wall and then you're forced to do it. Right. Like I was forced to do it. I had no choice but to get working on it. That is amazing. And yeah. somehow, right, that's his mercy right? Taking you down to a point of total, complete desperation, not caring what anybody thinks. There's no more excuses. Right. And then you're able to finally do what you've been being asked to do gently the whole time. Yes. Now he's going to put the pressure on. Yes. Amen. It's amazing. It really was amazing. And I learned so much. And I, um, I literally, I, I, like I said earlier, I literally feel like a completely different person. And then, you know, after the diagnosis, you know, um, and then after going through that deliverance and I took the three chemo and then I did have the surgery, but they were just cleaning it up. You know, I, I prayed about that too. I was resistant about that too. And I was literally crying and, um, and Stephanie asked Mike and Mike said, no, no, tell her me tell her that father already knew that she was going to say yes to the surgery and this is not a failure this is still a miracle of god and this is the lord working through you and let them just go in there and clean up and they just they just made sure and they just cleaned up a little bit uh on the inside they found three little nodules like the size of walnuts but they said those were already dead wow they were already dead they said there was no living cancer that's amazing in. and and they said that was another miracle because after three chemo that's not it's not possible it's unheard it's not possible it's unheard of for what i had going on and so and then after that i continued the demons wanted me to think oh you're done now but i remember learning on one of mike's teachings don't let the team demons tell you that you're done. They're going to put you on a high and make you feel so good and everything, but don't let them do that. Keep going and get the rest of it out. And sure enough, I kept going and I'm still working on some things now. I'm still working on the last little bit of it because I had so much to come through, but I kept going. This was in June and I went, I literally had an in-person appointment in Phoenix in yep. June last year. And I got delivered of scoliosis. Now, this is what you were talking about in the beginning of, of this conversation, right? Where your spine was off and you had limited yeah. mobility. So it was scoliosis that was the, the culprit of that. It was scoliosis. And I was born that way. And like I said... Throughout my teenage years and my, and my 20s and even into my early 30s, I found coping mechanisms. But then I was having so much back pain and my breathing was was off and I was very shallow. I once had a trauma specialist evaluate me and I didn't even know while we were sitting and talking that she was evaluating my breathing. And after the conversation, she looked at me and she said, do you know that you breathe just about enough? to not turn blue and fall dead out of the chair. That's how shallow you're breathing. And I'm like, okay. So, so that was years prior. That was like in the early 2000s when I had that evaluation and I was continuing going, you know, I had lots of people telling me, we know what's wrong with you, but we don't know how to help you. 
Mm. That's telling. So frustrating too. Right, right. So fast forward to, you know, June of 2023, and I go for a live in person in in Phoenix at the Deliverance Center, and I wind up remembering, the Holy Spirit bring to remembrance a sin that I did when I was like 15 that just, I buried it, I was brokenhearted, and I was sitting there, and you know, they, they do like the intake form, like, you know, tell, tell us more about your life and what yeah. other things you were involved in so that we can get to all of it, right? We want to get to all of it and help you get delivered. The Holy Ghost is going to deliver you. And I'm, I'm, I'm just about done. And I, and I have this thought of, no, I don't, I don't need to confess that. I, I've already confessed that. And I'm thinking this in my mind and it's so subtle. It's like, like really subtle thought. And I'm thinking, I, I've already confessed that to somebody else. I don't, I, I, nah, I think I, I, I yeah, I'm, I'm done. But I'm not saying a word. I'm just thinking it. And it's a very vague, subtle thought that I'm barely catching it. But I caught it because the Holy Spirit wanted me delivered. And I said, oh, my gosh. I think I'm supposed to tell you this sin, but I just am having a thought that I shouldn't because I've already confessed this and I wind up spilling it out of my mouth. This is the Holy Ghost working and I spill it out of my mouth and I am so broken hearted and I'm sobbing and Stephanie's looking at me and she's saying, but he died for you even for that. And I'm like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't accept this. And I'm just letting all the grief out. I just can't. Amen. I'm letting all the grief out. And I'm the shame and the guilt, such shame and guilt. And I'm like, no, I just can't. And she's like, you have to, you have to. He died even for that. And I said, okay, okay. And the next thing I know, she starts calling stuff out and then all of a sudden she starts calling out the spirit of scoliosis. And I am like retching and coughing and my my leg is like trembling and 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 I could feel like my back is doing something. And then all of a sudden something went Phoom! and I stood up out of the chair and I feel different in my spine and in my back. And I am actually walking different and my shoulders were even because one of my shoulders is typically like this, even to the point where after I come back home and my sister, my blood relative sister, my sister that I grew up with came to visit me and she said, what did God do for you? Your shoulders are not crooked. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> You're like a walking health miracle, you know, <laughs> how many, how many health miracles can we get in one person? It's crazy. And you know, what's so awesome is for all the, you know, you read the Bible and God is so hell bent against people in sorcery and witchcraft and false religions and false gods and idolatry and all of that. And pride, right. Which is heavily tied into witchcraft and new age. Yes. But still, you know, it, it even sounds like in your testimony, like mine, I was not looking for God. I was looking for an alternative to the God of the Bible because I wanted mm -hmm. some, I knew there was something spiritual I needed, but I didn't want it to be him. So mm -hmm. when he did the same thing to me, putting me down the, the rabbit hole, looking for, for me, it was deliverance. What does deliverance mean? What demons are real? Mm -hmm. God, the God of the Bible is real. Same thing, mm -hmm. right? But mm -hmm. I'm like, looking back, I go, you were, you came after me. I didn't even come after you. And I was in the midst of depravity and you were still that merciful to me. Like, who Amen. are you? You know, Amen. like, and he Amen. is good. And that is just incredible, sister. Wow. So yes. tell us, tell us Amen. how different life is for you now. Now you're on the mend, right? You've got a clean bill of health. You're still going through deliverance, but yes. how has life changed for you now? 
life is so much different. I feel so free. Now I know what it means, that verse, who the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. And I feel so free in Christ that I, I literally feel like a, a, I'm a completely different person. My thought processes are different and I'm still in, in the, you know, in the middle of mind renewal, but I, th I think differently. I make different choices. I behave differently. My roommate said to me, who has known me for, I think, 15 or 16 years, my roommate said to me, you are a completely different person. You are more loving, more compassionate, more joyful, more peaceful. Um, you are just a completely different person. And so now that I'm getting my strength back, because it, it, it actually took a while for my body to rebuild from, you know, the treatments that I had and, of course, the surgery that I had and also all the all the deliverance and all of the healing. Yeah. So my body, the Lord is like rebuilding my body and I'm, I'm gaining my strength back now because I had lost a lot of strength and I was fatigued a lot. Um, but yeah, I am, um, it, everything is, is so different. Yesterday, my church, I have a sweet little church that I attend and, and they are, the, the people are just so loving. And um, I went out and met them. They had, they had a booth up and they were sharing the gospel. And, and that's, and Erica, that's like, that's not me. I, I was not like a person like, uh, you know, that I would go and, and, and be, you know, extroverted and forthright and outright and, and talking to strangers. That was like the worst for me. I was like, I can't talk to strangers. Right. But, but there's a, when you know the true God, like many people have said to me, well, how did you know that the encounter that you had was actually the living Christ, the living God, and, and you know, and not what's different between, you know, the Jesus of the new age. And I, I have to tell you, there is, it's so far different when you encounter the living Christ, the living God of the Bible, the almighty that created the heavens and the earth, there is no comparison and there is no doubt and there's no question. It's completely differently. Yeah. Like when he, upon my salvation, he completely gave me a new consciousness that I was like, one minute I was like this and the next minute I'm like, Oh my gosh, of course, the God of the Bible is true and real. Yeah. And there is no question. Isn't that interesting? Cause it's like, how could I have been so blinded? It's exactly what you said, right? The, the prince of the power of the air has the power to blind the minds of them who do not believe. And that's one yes. of the verses that would come to me often. It was like, you literally had a veil over your eyes. You literally were just stuff that right now is so obvious. Yes. I was just completely darkened to, and it was all spiritual. Right. But it's such a miracle, man. We it are both is. so blessed. We are. Amen. Well, listen, I'm going to stop this recording, but thank you so much for sharing your testimony. I can't wait to post it. And um, you are such a blessing and this testimony is so great. And I can't wait to see uh, other people blessed through it. They already have been. Yeah. So. Amen. Amen. And all glory to God. And amen. thank you for having me here. And yes, I pray that it blesses everyone. Praise God.